you know, Pollard, Jacobs, Derrick Henry, and NFC ADP were all going around the two three turn. So that would be amazing. But but uh, yeah, if we're talking about the one two turn here, I took Pollard. I think eleventh or tenth or eleventh in a draft. I was hoping for Barkley. He went one pick before me. Uh, I do think there's a you know probably maybe a big difference. But I just love Pollard. I, I just think he's a terrific player. <clears throat> I think we all probably feel that way. My question is, you know, can he handle a big workload? Right. He have worn down a little bit toward the end of last season. His efficiency went. Way he broke down. his leg. He did do that. Broke, could not handle it. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of guys I'm, get injured. When and, I say that, it's a it's tongue in cheek, kind of, because I do think there are one hundred percent football coaches and football guys who would say that without being tongue in cheek or without smiling or without laughing. Like I think. There's a big question mark when a guy comes into the NFL as like the most part-time of part-time backs in college and then spends his career as a ba- significant backup. Like it wasn't a 1A, 1B situation really until last year. Yeah. And then has a career high in touches and suffers a major injury. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, yes, it's true. And, and, uh, and even his own running backs coach last year said they wanted to keep him to like 30 touches, uh, or 30 snaps, 30 snaps. 30 snaps. But then I think the next game he really played well. like 55. <laughs> snaps. I mean, he's just so good. You can't keep him off the field. And Dallas is so high scoring. It, I just think there's going to be a lot of, a lot so of an opportunity. That's one thing is I do think this Dallas offense is going to take a step back next season. It might not be like less efficient, but the switch from Mike McCarthy to Callum Moore, I think is going to see a, a, drop in volume potentially a significant one yes, the big the kellen moore era dallas cowboys were top three in uh neutral context pace or whatever the term would be and mike mccarthy's final three seasons with the packers when he was calling plays they were bottom 12 every season so i think this this offense may still be very good but in terms of the amount of points they they score and the amount of plays they run i think it's going to take a step back Right, but can you can you tell me five offenses that you're very confident are going to be higher scoring than Dallas? And they're still going to be one of the best. No, offenses. I think it's a, it's a real question. Like, there's a legitimate qu- quote from Mike McCarthy saying that Kellen Moore thought the job of the uh, only job of the offense was to score points, yeah. and he believes the job of the offense is to let the defense rest. Like, yep. he wants. Well, how to do you do play. that? What? How do you do that? Long drives don't gain too many yards in one play. Don't and run, run the ball. Many, run the ball. Right. Hey. He's not going to. OK, listen, <laughs> he is not going to have 20 carries a game. If they're going to run the ball 35 times a game, then some, then Dalvin Cook or Ezekiel Elliott or someone else is going to average 3.8 yards per carry and get yelled at for being in Tony Pollard's way because Tony Pollard's not going to do that. No. If he did, right. So it's a bad thing if they're going to replace some of Tony Pollard's targets with rush attempts. Why do they have to replace his targets with rush attempts? Why wouldn't he just get more rush attempts and also get targets? Because we he's don't... the lead running back for the Cowboys. That's that would be the, you know he's going to get his touches. They need to give him the ball. I do not believe he's ever going to approach the touches that Ezekiel Elliott received as the lead running back for, as the, for the Dallas Cowboys. Completely agree with that. I, okay. I just don't think that he needs. I I, I think a, another part that's just kind of to simplify it is just Josh Jacobs was a lot better than Tony Pollard last season. So was, Pollard needs yeah. Pollard needs to take a step forward to be as good as Jacobs was last season, and Jacobs needs to take a step back in order to justify taking Pollard over Jacobs. And both of those things may be reasonable assumptions, but it's not reasonable enough for me to assume it. I'm going to give Jacobs the benefit of the doubt here because, like, those not very good Josh Jacobs seasons from pre 2023 look a lot like what. Tony Pollard did last season. It's right around 15 and a half PPR points per game. Yeah, but Pollard was was the second back on the team. They don't have Zeke anymore. And th- so there's what, no way, there's no way Pollard's not going to lead the team in carries this year. What oh, I definitely think there is a way. But how why would they franchise tag a guy if he's not going to lead the team in carries? Um because I don't but, think the Cowboys are at the cutting edge of RB right. valuations. Give me the scenario where he doesn't lead the team in carries. Uh, they signed Dalvin Cook for $5 million, and they just let Dalvin Cook run the ball into the offensive line 240 times, and, Dal- and Tony Pollard gets 230 carries. Yeah, so Cook, that is the only one. If they bring Zeke back, there's no way Zeke's going to out-carry Pollard. That would be insane. 
Like Cook would be the only one unless Mixon becomes available or something like so that. But I think this is good because like, going on a little bit too long. So just you can wrap it up, Heath. What do you think Tony Pollard's like carries per game ups or or even touch per game? But I think we should, carries what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like he'd never averaged double digit carries at any level before last year, and he averaged twelve carries per game last year. Are are you thinking that he could have more than like fifteen? No. I think 15 and three and a half catches, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, that's, I think that's a, I think that's a reasonable upside expectation. 18 to 19 touches per game for Pollard to me at five yards per carry. Well, I would not, you should not expect him to average five yards per I, carry. I if he's going to have a 30% increase in touches. I do expect it because I think he's one of the best running backs. I think he's behind one of the best offensive lines. If I'm going to expect someone to do it, it's going to be, He's going to be on the short list. I think he's going to be extremely efficient. He's explosive. He's terrific. And I think as long as Zeke would Zeke would be a problem because I think, think Zeke would have the goal line role. But if I'm not too concerned about the goal line role, I think Pollard's headed for a huge season. Part, I, I part just, of the problem there, though, is that still might be 80 fewer carries than Josh Jacobs. Okay. I, I, it's All right. Let's move on. Um, it's also an upside downside thing. I, I would say, you know, I think, I love this. I was like, waiting for this. It yes. seems like the community thinks that Jacobs has more downside. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Pollard has more upside. That's disappointing. No, I don't think Pollard has more upside. Okay, darn it.